Who's calling? One moment. For you, sir. Hello? Hello? I can't get a word of that. What? Just a moment, please. Parkins, turn it off. Yes, oh, sir. Oh, no, not you. Hello? Oh, George, how are you? You did? What is it? A two-seater with a whirlwind? Oh, that's swell. I bet it's a beautiful job. Well, no, George, I, uh, I'd love to, but you know how my aunts are. Oh, but say, uh, when you take it up, will you fly over the house? Oh, that's fine. So long. George bought an airplane. Parkins, I said George bought an airplane. Well, sir, I'm sorry to hear it. I hope the young man doesn't fall down with it. I know what you're really thinking. You're tickled to death that I haven't a plane because I might fall down and hurt my dear little self. But please, sir... Wouldn't I... you rather die gloriously zipping through the air than bundled up in a rocking chair before the fireplace? Uh, really, sir, I hadn't given it much thought. Well, I have. Yes, sir. As far back as I can remember, my two aunts, you and those two guards, have been in a conspiracy to prevent my doing anything I might accidentally enjoy. Please, sir, anything I have done has been because I like you, and I'm sure the rest feel the same way. You are the only Morton left, sir. That is, a boy to carry on the name. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, Parkins, but I've heard that a thousand times. I only wish I was plain John since you could play football and even throw rocks. That's all right, sir. I know how. Shall we continue with the polo, sir? Nope. I'm never going to play polo again unless it's on a real horse. The fact still remains. He was arrested doing 70 miles an hour, and you were not with him. Well, it's like Flanagan was explaining, Mom. I was driving, and David was sitting between us. We stopped at a sandwich stand, and Flanagan and me got out to get some sandwiches. And when I turned around, the boy was going down the road like a comet. That's no excuse. You know how impetuous the boy is. Your job is to watch him. He might have been killed. If I might be so bold as to mention it, Miss Harriet, I think he's held down too much. At his age, that will make a boy desperate. There's a great deal to that, Harriet. We've been rather severe with David. I remember when I was a girl. That is beyond the point, Agatha. When our brother died, he entrusted David to our care. We have a solemn duty to perform, and sentiment has no part in it. Well, I still think he's held down too much. Why, only the other day he told me that he might strangle Parkins for just a little excitement. But you don't think he would? Well, I think he might. <gasps> You should not stop your exercise, sir, until you are ready for your shower. Or I might catch cold, I presume. Exercise! That's what I need, exercise! Please, sir. Master David, Master David, please! You might hurt yourself! Oh, I lost that noise! <laughs> it sounds like it's upstairs, ma'am. Go stop it! At once. At once. Yes. You too. Oh, yes, ma'am. You'll tire yourself out here, Mr. David. Look out, Parkinson. Oh, I'm going to get you. Please. Woo! Oh, David. Oh, Master David. I'll get you, Parkinson. Oh. Woo! Woo! Please, please Look sir. Look out, Parkinson. Stop. Master David. Woo! <laughs> Oh, my word. 
The trouble with you, Parkins, is you have an athlete's heart. Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. Go get the doctor quickly. Yes, ma'am. Oh, poor <laughs> David. Parkins, don't forget the bicycle. Yes, ma'am. Agatha. Agatha. Here it is. Oh! David, put your feet down. It's too hot. Flanagan, put David's feet in the tub. Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, doctor, I thought you'd never get here. I got here as quickly as I could. <laughs> Is he all right? I'm afraid so. We won't need that water. Hmm. Well, what is it? What is the matter? Tell us, doctor. What brought this on? What happened before he fell into the lily pond? He was chasing Parkins down the stairway. On the bicycle? Yes, sir, all over the house. Oh, doctor, I was only playing. Parkins, what caused him to chase you downstairs? Well, sir, we were having our morning polo practice. On the mechanical horse? Yes, sir. And then Master David says he was not going to play polo anymore unless he had a real horse. Yes. Well, sir, from then on, he suddenly went a bit wild. If you know what I mean. He jumped up and down, rolled over on the floor. A fit? You didn't tell us that. No, ma'am. I forgot. But it wasn't exactly a fit. Doctor, I was merely taking a little exercise to let off some steam. Is it serious, Doctor? Well, in a way. What is it? Tell us, Doctor. Well, it's a rather difficult case, rather hard to prescribe for. Tell us, Doctor. We'll do everything we can. Well, here it is. David is as sound as a dollar. In fact, he's disgustingly healthy. But he's surrounded by a lot of well-meaning folks who know absolutely nothing about a young man's energy <laughs> and try to suppress him at every turn. I've been hoping for some time that he'd break loose. In fact, if he hadn't soon, I would have really been worried about him. We will see you downstairs, Doctor. Very well. Come, Agatha. Can I get out of this tub now? I see no reason why you can. But you're going to have to get out of more than that to make a man of yourself. Just what do you mean? Uh-uh. I've prescribed enough already. Now I must go downstairs and hear your aunt tell me that I'm no longer the family physician. So, good luck. Thanks, doctor. I'll think over what you've said. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Remember, I didn't suggest anything. Oh, I understand perfectly. Perkins! Yes, sir. I want you to lay out my brown tweed. But, sir, don't you think... No, and I don't want you to, either. You don't want me to do what, sir? Well, doctor, he's still downstairs. I've had enough doctors for one day. However, you run downstairs and tender my compliments to Mulligan and Flanagan. Tell them that as soon as I finish dressing, I'd like to go for a stroll, with their permission and their company. Yes, sir. Don't forget, sir, to wear your top coat and muffler. Miss Harris said the boy was to stay in his room the rest of the day and where to watch him. Ain't it? Uh, didn't she? Master David. What on earth's the matter here? Oh, the lad won't open the door. David! David, open the door instantly. Oh, dear. He said he was going to do something desperate. Why didn't you say that before? I forgot. Quick, Flanagan! 
Break down that door. Break down the door. Break it down. David. 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 No, I just to fix you the tire. Thank you very much, you boys. Say, hey, mister, when I first buy this automobile, huh, there is only Josephine and Manuel, Rosa, and myself. And then we get a little surprise. There's a come uh, quintuplets. And then there's a plenty crowd. And there's a little bambino. And next month, there's a come the mother-in-law. What you need is a larger car. Are you telling me, eh? <laughs> I'll tell you. How would you like to trade your roadster for my delivery truck? What's the big idea, eh? Well, uh, I want a smaller car, and you need my truck. Say, you're telling me the truth. Are you know, steal this car, eh? No, it belongs to my estate. I'm David Morton. Oh, you live by the big estate near Fairview? Yeah, that's right. Um, I can prove my identity right now. And we make a deal right here. All right. Uh, what do you say, Mama? Hey, Papa, take the bigger car. Sure, all right. It's a go. Right on. <laughs> Thank you, boss. Uh, goodbye, boss. Goodbye, on, Tony. Kids. Good luck. Come on, we got a bigger car now. Come on. That's a ticket. Come on, Tony. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, Mama. Antonio, where is he? I don't know. Huh? Hey, Mr. Police! Uh, hey, come on the back, eh, hey, mister? Come back, eh? Hey. I forgot to something, the police. Uh, come on the back, eh? Hey. That's the man. One of my notes, please, eh? Hey, I forgot to something. One of my notes, eh? Ah, see, my Antonio, come here. Ha, 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 baby. What's the matter? You don't like your papa no more, eh? Hey. All right, come on to the right, see? Come on, Tony.
Hey, what kind of a game are you playing? That truck just passed me up. It looked to me like it passed you over. No, I'm just trying to catch a ride. Well, get in. Fine, thanks. Here, take care of Gladys, will you? Gladys? <laughs> you seem to be traveling kind of light. Yeah, I had a trunk, too, but the landlady got that. Oh, I see. Where are you going? Oh, no place in particular, but I'm looking for a job. I'll put Gladys up there. Now we've got to find a place for you. Oh, that's all right. I'll hop right on back here. You all set? Okay, let her go. Now watch yourself. This thing doesn't know its own strength. Okay. Hey, I'm not with you. Wait for me. Anything strange about that? No. Well, what are you trying to do? Keep people off the highway? Oh, I didn't mean to hit you. You see, I'm just learning to drive. Oh. So you pick a racing car to take lessons in. Weren't there any airplanes handy? You see, the car belongs to my brother. But he got hurt in an accident, so I thought I'd drive it myself. Well, uh, let's see if it'll run. Can you drive a racer? Sure. Would you like to drive this one? You mean to drive it in the race? Sure. It's a deal. Okay. Say, uh, help me take this down the road and uh, I'll follow you into town. All right. job. I think you have the valve set up too tight, though. You're absolutely right. I haven't been able to do much work since I turned over. I think I can fix her up all right. Say, that's swell. You must have had a lot of experience on racers. We had a chauffeur once who used to be a driver. He taught me a lot about motors. <laughs> that is, uh, I was in a garage. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll take the car back to your garage and wash up a bit. I'll be down later and show you the layout. Fine. It's been a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Thank you. You sure pick good-looking pilots, Bertie. I didn't pick him. I ran into him. <laughs> Gee, sis, didn't I tell you you shouldn't try to drive the racer? It's a good thing I did. I made a good deal with him to drive our car. Don't you think, Gertie, you're taking chances with someone you don't know a thing about? We've got to take chances. There's only a few days before the race. But I'd be glad to get you a driver. I couldn't let you get me a driver, Alan, when you're entered in the race, too. Oh, oh. nonsense. It's only sport with me. I'd be happy if your car won. It means so much to you and Donald. And you know how I feel about you, dear. Well, this is my own deal, Alan. I think Mr. Smith's a good driver, and I hired him for the job. Well, I hope it turns out all right. I've made a deal to race this car for a percentage of the winnings. That is, if I win. What are you going to do, Mickey? Well, I got nothing in mind. However, if you need a mechanic, well, I think I'll stick around. I know a few things about cars. Good, I'll split whatever I get with you. Uh, say, Smith, I just told Gertie to get a driver for her. You see, we're old friends, and there's no use of her to obligate herself to strangers. You're driving in the race, too, aren't you? Sure, I have a necklace entered. But that's none of your business. Well, it probably will be on the track. Perhaps you don't know who I am. No. Well, my father's president of First National here in Meadowvale. And we're not inclined to have strangers come in and take advantage of our friends. Now, the best thing you can do, you and your friend, is to be on your way. 
Thanks for the advice, but uh, I've been hired to drive by Miss McDowell, and I'll be staying here. Well, use your own judgment. What was he saying to you? Oh, he thinks I shouldn't be here, I guess. Don't pay any attention to him. He thinks he owns the town. We've got to be nice to him because his old man has a plaster on the house. But if we win that race, we'll tell him to jump in the creek. Well, we'll sure try to win it. That's the stuff. As I told you, Mr. Smith, you can have the room over the garage. It's already fixed up. Oh, that's fine. Oh, uh, this is Mickey Daniels, my mechanic. Oh, uh, hello. My name's Mary. How, how are you? We'll be seeing a lot of each other now that I'm going to live here. Yes, I know. I'll show you the rooms if you like. Fine. <laughs> Is Jake in? He's right back there. Well, I tried my best to get Gertie to fire that fella, but she won't listen. But I'll win the race, don't worry. I'm not worrying. You've had six days to get that Smith guy out of the race. But I tell you, I've done all I can. Now you listen to me. I've got a lot of money up on that race tomorrow. And you know and I know that's the only car that's liable to beat you. Now Pete's got to drive that car. But I tell you, she won't get rid of Smith. Well, I will. Jerry. No, you nearly killed Don. I won't have any more accidents. Oh, you won't. You want the money to get out of the jam in your father's bank, don't you? Yes, but uh, you can't... Our deal was you in the race, and I'll give you the dough to keep out of jail. You know what to do, Jerry. Okay, boss. I call her Gladys. I named her after a girl I used to go with. Why? Because she was so slow? No, because she was bow-legged. <laughs> Now let me have that little screwdriver. That's got it. Can the mechanical department do with the cookie? Huh. I just made them. Boy, is that something. Thanks, sis. Up. One more workout down the old post road and we'll let her rest until the race. I get so nervous thinking about tomorrow. Well, I'm not. Dave's got this old machine running just like a clock. Where's Mickey? I'll start it for you. Oh, no, you don't. Mickey! All right. Woman, there comes a time in every man's life when he must depart. Take good care of Gladys for me, will you? Positively. I'll have turtle soup ready when you get back. Mickey! All right. You wouldn't hurt Gladys, would you? I don't know. It's the first time I was ever jealous of a turtle. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll change your name to Mary. Well, I'm not bow-legged. Mick, give it a push, will you? Sure. <laughs> All set? All set. Okay. Good luck. A close one. You're telling me. I thought the man with the little green hat had us that time. That's funny. A new tire, too. The good thing it didn't hurt the car. It's okay. You stay here while I go down the road and phone Gertie to bring out a new tire. Okay, and while you're gone, I'll be changing this one. Go on. Go on. No, nothing serious at all. Okay. I'm at the Highway Coffee Shop. Will you pick me up here? Good. Goodbye. Take it easy, Mulligan. There's David.
of coffee. Make it three. Hey, I'm Mulligan. And I'm Flanagan. Say, may I use your phone again, please? Pardon me. He don't know us. I think he does. damage as far as I can see. Oh. Did, did you ever see a, a blowout that looked like this? Looks like somebody punched a hole through it. Nice now, Mickey. What do you mean? Somebody shot a hole through that tire. Well, I'll be. I wonder... Where did you have the blowout? Oh, about 20 miles down the post road. By the old haunted house? Old two-story abandoned place with weeds all around? That's it. Yeah. We were about a quarter of a mile from there. I can remember it while I was waiting. That's where I turned over. There wasn't enough left of my tire to see what caused the puncture. Boy, this is serious. Say, I wonder where Dave is. I'm a bit worried, but don't say anything to Gertrude. Oh, hello, Alan. May I see you a minute? What is it? I do wish you'd let Pete drive your car tomorrow. We've been all through that, Alan. Why do you dislike me so, Gertrude? I don't dislike you, Alan. But you take things seriously. Suppose your car doesn't win tomorrow. It will win. Well, I hope it does for your sake, dear. Dave! What happened to you? Oh, I got to talking to a fellow I used to know. He drove me to town. Hello. Well, I must be going, Gertrude. May I call and take you to the dance tonight? Why? I promised to go with David. Oh, I see. Well, I hope your luck holds up in the race tomorrow. So you said she's in this town somewhere. Is this your car? Good. Two minutes. The constable wants to see about it. What? We didn't park it here. Somebody took it from us this afternoon. But he can explain that to the constable. Oh.
At last I know what's wrong with me I'm bursting with chatter Explaining, you see, baby I had been living in a blue haze I had forgotten how to smile You brought me the new days You made living worthwhile So put some root on my feet Hang a rainbow around me New days are over now Oh, in the air, everywhere Bluebirds singing around me New days are over better than that. Why don't you get out there and do it? Oh, well, uh, I don't like to show off. Sam and Tony are on their way. I hope they do a good job. Hey, when they get through with that car, nobody will drive it. Sure nobody's at home? No, nah, they're all at the dance except that fellow in the wheelchair. Boys can take care of him. Okay, let's go out to the house. And now who's next? Come on, folks, don't be bashful. Remember, it's all in fun. Here he is, Mickey Daniels. Oh, Nick. Well, Mickey Daniels is next, folks. Come on, Mickey. <laughs> Hello, Mickey. Hello. Well, give him some music, boys. Go ahead, Tootsie. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you play? Go ahead, we'll follow you. stranger here. Maybe he's a dancer. Well, where is he? Send him out. Well, what kind of
of music do you like? Oh, I'm, I'm not particular. Anything you have left. Yeah. Ready? Oh, well, I need a little more room. Maybe we better all go home. <laughs> with us. Hey, Dave, what's up? Nothing. We want this fella. You're coming with us and we have to take you by force. What? Well, you're coming with us. Well, there goes your driver. But what's the bull? Uh, those men are detectives. He stole their car. I don't believe it. You thought you'd get away with something, you dirty crook. Here, you stop that. Let him alone, Flanagan. Put up your fist. Grab that criminal. Stay out of this, Flanagan. Why, you... Good boy, Andy. Good dog. Now you're going with us. Oh, now listen, fellas. You don't need me at home. Oh, yeah, but your aunt wants you. No, you don't. And besides, you two fellas are well together. Too. Take it easy now. What's the meaning of this? Don't start anything. You're liable to get hurt. You can't do this. I want out of here. Now, that's fine. You're going to stay here till Jake arrives. If we have to plug you. You mean you'd shoot me? You wouldn't dare. No. We'll just try leaving. Bring him here. Well, he showed up and started to put up a fight. We found this on him. That don't spell Smith either. 
Well, this is something. Do you know who this kid is? Who? This is a piece of luck. My name's Smith, and if you don't let me out of here, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. Okay, Mr. Smith. You'll be out of here tomorrow, as soon as I contact your family. You must be worth a nice little piece of change. Take care of you. Listen, I'll give you anything you want. But let me out of here so I can drive that race. You're not going to drive any race. You're worth too much money to me. You might be killed. You'll regret it. If you're smart, you'll be a good kid. The boys will take care of you. Keep your eye on them, boys, and I'll see you after the race. Shall we play cards? Ooh. Here, Jake won't stand for this. Jake! Would you like cards? Come on, make it snappy. Don't get your shirt off. I tried to tell you that fellow was a criminal, didn't I? I still can't believe it. Oh, I know how you feel, but after all, Pete's a good driver, and you've got a much better chance to win now. You know, as far as I'm concerned, why it's uh, just sportsmanship. I'll try to beat your car, but if I don't, I'll certainly be glad you've won. I do owe you some thanks, Alan. Ah, uh, that's all right, honey, you forget it. If anything happens, don't you worry. I'll see you after the race. Don't play with those shades, buddy. Oh, I just wanted to see if it was raining. What time is it? 2.30. Tony will be here with lunch in a minute. Sam, would you like to make a little money? Now listen, I'll see that you're well repaid if you let me out of here. No dice, Sonny. Ah, oh, lunch! <laughs> No excuse for you not winning now. All right, I'll win. Come on, boys, let's take her out. I'll see you after the race. Put on the gas all the time. She's got a lot of soup. Never mind, I'll do the driving.
much to win. and stole all the prize money. The prize money? Mickey, get some policemen quick and follow me out to the old house in the Port Road. And give me a shove. <laughs> that was great. Boys, give me a shove and follow Mickey. Okay. Come on, fellas.
Jake. I'll take that bag and keep your hands in the air. Now sit over there, the two of you. Any minute. I told you you couldn't get away with it, Jake. In time. I was wondering how I could watch you and keep an eye on these fellas. Well, keep your eyes on them, and I promise you I won't run away. All right. Get going, you fellas. Go on. Then we may expect you for the weekend? I think it's awfully nice of you to ask us. Nonsense. I think you're a sweet child, and I'm very happy that David met you. I'm all ready. <laughs> Has Gertrude agreed to come? The whole McDowell family will be there. Good. <laughs> well, goodbye, dear. Oh, David, I forgot to tell you. We bought you a polo pony. Why, Aunt Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be expecting you next week, then. Goodbye. And I want to thank you again for all you've done for us. Save it. There's the swellest moonlight in our garden. You can thank me then. All right. Come, David. Wait a minute. Come on, Mickey. Well, so long, Toots. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho